Hello, this is the Torg Eternity Brief Delphi Council debriefing where the storm has a name. You might see uh, Marsic pop up a little bit. Uh, when I do these brief debriefings, I don't put him in the other room. Um, so he tends to jump in my lap and try to get my attention while I'm speaking. So sorry if I get distracted now and then. But this is a brief debriefing because I just wanted to put out a little bit of information for both Torg Eternity 1.5 as well as Year 2. Um, hoping or our goal is sometime not late, but in 2024. Basically, why I wanted to do this is to kind of explain what is going on, but I can't be very specific. Um, because I don't want this to be taken as we might do this or we're thinking about doing this and then that become a will. We are going to do it and then that becomes a, if it's not done, a they fail to do this thing or they, um, basically that's that's kind of it. So um, for Tor Eternity 1.5, what I did want to say is that there is a lot of confusion or speculation on what it is. There's only a f certain core number of people that know what it is. So anything you hear out there is most definitely going to be speculation and not actual uh, things. If it didn't come from, from me personally or a link to something that I said or wrote somewhere else. So this is clarification also. 1.5 started as a let's do some minor tweaks to clarify rules, to get rid of redundant rules and things like that. And that is a goal of Torg Eternity 1.5. But what ended up happening is we kind of looked at what is the goal and the purpose of Torg Eternity and what is the pitch that we give for what Torg Eternity playing it and the experience that you that we would like you to have with it and that is a mashup of different genres um, certain genres are pretty clear-cut gothic horror for aurorish but then a lot of and majority of the realms are two or more type of genres smashed in together where we could point to various movies uh, comics tv series and say if you want to understand kind of the general feel, this is what it is. So like Tharkold, I like to say, take Mad Max, take Hellraiser, kind of smash them together. And that kind of gives you a basic building block for Tharkold, or as I previously said, Gothic Horror for Aurorsh. So we have different genres in Torg Eternity. And then with the background of the Possibility Wars, all of these different genres and realities are clashing together. And what happens when a certain reality has rules and another reality doesn't abide by those same rules? And you could think of them as physical laws or natural laws or, or whatever, but certain places don't agree with each other. And that's how you have things like firearms not working in certain realities because that's what the reality is. They don't work. And it doesn't matter that you, as a normal person, know and think that these things should work. It's that reality says that they don't work. And then the player characters are Storm Knights, which are able to transcend that limitation where they can bring in a connection to their own reality and have those things work even though they shouldn't with the possibility of things going haywire like disconnections and, and things like that. So we looked at that purpose. We looked also at, we want it to be very cinematic. We want it to be, uh, Tour of Eternity should be something that is, gets you into a movie type or a TV series type feeling as you play it. So we, and I've stated this previously in different places, we're looking at every single rule in the game and determining is this something that lends credence to that goal or is it something that may even hinder or block that goal? And those things are things that we would like to change or eliminate if need be 
to make the game what we pitch it as. So we're looking at every rule, so I'll say that. And there are a few rules that we're just completely cutting out. But that doesn't mean that if you like those rules, you can't use them. There will be a lot of backwards compatibility um, is a goal. So if you like certain rules that are no longer there, there are still options that you could use. I'll give an example is uh, shooting into melee. So when you have somebody outside of melee shooting, whether it's bows or, or throwing uh, spears or shooting laser rifles, into a group of fighters currently the rules as written is you total up your d20 roll with any explosions that might happen and then if the last number or the last total is odd then you have a random chance of hitting something and so you take everything in that combat or in that near of where your target was and the game master can assign them values, and then it's randomly decided who is hit. On an even total, you hit your target. But that's one thing that we've even discussed here on the Delphi Council debriefings, that almost every game master, almost every table, has a way to mitigate, because even though that might be realistic and simulationist, that's not a purpose of Torg Eternity. Torg Eternity is not supposed to be a simulationist type game. It's supposed to be a cinematic game. And how often in movies, any type of movies, do people shoot their allies regularly or what they're not shooting at? Either they miss or, you know, normally they shoot and they either miss or hit. It's not that they hit something random. If they do hit something random, it's because it was meant to be part of that plot. And what I see the plot as is the drama deck, what the drama deck says. So a lot of these rules that we might get rid of would be great things for a game master to use as a setback, but not always to use. And then that gives the game master more options to use in the setback um, type situation instead of it always boiling down to they're disfavored. They're disfavored, they're disfavored because you don't have a nice range of things that you can use as a setback. So that's one of the things that we're looking for in Torg Eternity. We're looking at, every, like I said, every single rule, every th way things play. We've been testing in the background and I've had uh, positive results myself in my own table as well as other authors have done it and they've had positive results that don't take away from the feeling of Torg because that's another thing that I don't. I don't want our end result to be something that it's not Torg, but speeding up the process. And there's a lot of steps that slow things down and make combat take longer, even though a normal uh, Torg combat, say, is usually between three and six rounds of game time, they can take hours of real time. And we wanted to cut that down, have it faster pace, have people uh, participate uh, more, even more than normal with interaction attacks and having a variety of methods to do something. So that's kind of our goal. And another part of that is not to have certain paths that are considered required or that end up being everybody who wants to be a fighter there. We don't want right and wrong choices. So that's something that we're also looking at. So that's what it is for Torg Eternity 1.5. Is it a new edition? No, it's not going to be a new edition. It's still based on the core of Torg Eternity, which is based off the core of Torg, but it will be recognizable as Torg Eternity. It's not like a Torg Eternity 2nd edition or a Torg 3rd edition or anything like that. So it's kind of the, the middle ground. And there's a lot of games out there that have the 0.5 or where they've changed something from just having it be edition X and then uh, add on a little name like remastered or essentials or, or something to that effect. So we'll be Tor Eternity. Don't worry about that. If you like old rules, you should be able to use the old rules. And we're just making things so where they go a little more smoother and they're more intuitive because there's a lot of things that even veteran players, even people at my own house table that have been playing 
uh, the same mechanic in original Torg and classic Torg, as well as Torg Eternity, that forget constantly. And it's not because they're being forgetful for an advantage, like a he he he. I'm gonna I'm gonna forget in quotations this rule, and it'll give me advantage. It's be, just because it intuitively doesn't flow. So we're looking at that as well. Now let's shift over to year two. So year two is something that I know a lot of people have been waiting for. Year one was just stacking everything up, putting everything in place. And year two is where all the craziness happens. That will be the very first adventure, Fractures of Shadow and Light, which is a bridge from the uh, first year to the second year and setting up pieces and setting up uh really awesome things that will happen throughout the rest of this possibility war. The one thing I do want to say about it is Torg Eternity's possibility war is not going to be a rehash of the possibility wars of 1990 to 1995, not in any way, shape or form. It's going to be something very different. It's going to provide uh, players and game masters lots of cool ideas and both the mechanics of the game as well as the lore of the game we want to blend in really well, which is something that I've always felt has been really cool in um, all versions of Torg. So we want to keep that, but we want to even dive into that further with our adventures. The other thing is, and I've been promoting this um, pretty much every single Delphi Council debriefing since the very first one we've been doing, remember canon, your your game, your table is canon. So any rules that you want to use, please use them. Any rules that you dislike, you can tweak them. You can use optional rules. That's fine. And it is canon because Tor Eternity is an infiniverse made out of an infinity. An infinite amount of Cosm verses, and each table or each game master can have their own Cosm verse or even multiple Cosm verses if they wish and play it out differently. So, if your thing doesn't fall in with official, it's still canon, and I don't want anybody to worry about it. I'd much rather have somebody change a rule or two or the entire concept of Torg Eternity and play Torg Eternity and love Torg Eternity instead of thinking, oh, I have to go with what's been published and only what's been published and nothing else. Um, various people have different amounts of comfort level with manipulating rules and doing stuff. I've been doing that for all my role playing years, almost 40 years. At, at this point, I'm quite comfortable. I do understand that other people aren't. So the other thing is I want those choices to be choices that you choose to do, not things that you have to do. So I don't want to come in and break a bunch of rules that work or add a bunch of rules that don't work and that you're required to fix. That's absolutely not something that I am looking for. I'm looking to give everybody a nice solid foundation that works well together, that um, flows well, and then any changes you made will be based off of your own needs and your own table's needs and not because the game's broken or here, here's this wonky thing or this word that's used the same words used in various places. Uh, I'm looking at you, Relentless. Um, so that's one thing. So yes, certain things we will ch maybe keep the rule, but change the name of the rule, especially if it's been used. So either the special uh, threat ability of Relentless, which is the, the threat does not take shock, or the perk Relentless, which is if you all out attack and you spend some shock or take some shock damage then you add a bonus die of damage to a close combat attacks both being called relentless one of those names will be changed to something else because i when i hear and talk about relentless i want everybody on the same page and i think that's probably something that most if not everybody um, would like so that's basically mechanics Year two is going to be very different than the 1990 to 1995. We have these war fronts that are going to mean something. That's something that I often uh, see is people doubting that the Storm Knights, their player characters, will have influence in the possibility wars at your table. 
and based off of adventures, those decisions and those outcomes will impact you. And please, if we go one way officially and you go a different way in your own Cosmverse, don't feel in any way, shape, or form that you need to stick to what we have decided to publish officially. We are looking at a global audience and you are focused on your table. And as an example, in Classic Torg, there was an adventure called High Lord of Earth. And in it, there was a chance that there was an Aztec empire that was created, a new Cosm. Officially, it was shut down. And in most of Classic Torg adventures like that, the good guys won and didn't lose. So any bad thing that could happen usually was prevented by the Storm Knights. So this Aztec Empire was not established. In my own personal game, the players thought that they did it, but they didn't take a few crucial steps. Even when I kind of, I didn't hold up signs and say, you need to do this, but I gave hints and nobody caught on and the Aztec Empire ended up forming in my world. And with future stuff, you can change it. You can change it being a different cosm in that area and maybe keep the same base of the adventure, or you could put the adventure on a different time and stuff. And speaking of time, we will have a timeline. It will be a fluidly solid timeline. So a lot of questions are, when does this adventure take place? Or why does this adventure here say this thing happened? This other one here said this happen it's because the the one that came later it was written later or published later and it actually takes place earlier so while we won't do something like this adventure starts on october 16th and ends on november 7th we will have a statement of early october or these few weeks in november that it takes place and things like that so that we have somewhat of an order of both the adventures that take place and the important events that take place. And we'll do that for all year one. And then as we uh, continue into year two and beyond, there will be a, a timeline that can be followed. And again, if the timeline doesn't work for you, please change it. That's another thing that I did in my home game is um, as we were playing games, I didn't have all the books, and sometimes a book would come out later, and it was supposed to have been early, and I just put it at the end and had it changed uh, a few tweaks, even in toward um, eternity, when certain mega adventures and Delphi missions have come out, I've changed locations to, to fit my world, so there will be that. We want to give Game Masters the knowledge that changing it for your table is good but we also want to give a solid base and a logical base to work with so i know that kind of maybe sounds wishy-washy but we kind of want to let you have your cake and eat it too as we want to provide something solid so that if you stick official it'll be awesome for you but also that if you don't stick official um, that we don't want you to have to hesitate or second guess yourself from deviating from the path. Um, 2024 toward um, eternity 1.5 year two will be a thing. I thank everybody for your patience throughout 2023. As I said, we were looking at small tweaks and decided that if we were going to change things and make it the best Torg Eternity experience possible, that it was going to take more than just a few little minor tweaks here and there, and we would have to look at everything in depth. Also, look at the Cassandra file. Some of that stuff might um, either be whole cloth taken from Cassandra files, or some things may be altered a little bit. Um, as I said, Spectacular won't be a thing. Um, just because, in my opinion, and from how I've played it out, that really l lends itself to being way more in the player character's favor than in the threat uh, possibility rated threat's favor. The, the balance goes uh, really far. It wasn't a decision that I made based off of, oh, I got to go through and give a spectacular result for every miracle, spell, and psychic, uh, psionic power. Um, I, I would have did that if it would have 
evened out a little bit better. So that's basically what I have. Thank you very much for uh, listening and or watching. We hopefully will get back to the Delphi Council, the normal uh, the Delphi Council debriefings with Matt and Jay and or special guest hosts as we did before. If not, I do have some ideas for brief debriefings because we are getting in the holiday season. And so if schedules can't make, we will have I will try to have a uh, episode of something every single uh, every single week. And the last thing that I forgot to say, so let me say that, and then I will uh, wrap up, is 2023 was a good production year for Torg Eternity in the digital sphere. We had a, um, well, here we had the Delphi Council debriefings. I think we started in May and have been doing it not every single week, but most weeks. Um, there's been a few that we missed, but not too many as well as we had the tribal adventures on my minifactory.com where every single month we had a Torg Eternity, a new Torg Eternity adventure that was released with STL files for you to print off or have printed off various Torg miniatures. While we're not doing the adventure parts going into 2024 because our focus right now is absolutely on Torg Eternity 1.5 and the a year or two and beyond those STL files, there will be more Torg Eternity miniatures coming up. And for those who are in the tribe, the email was put out there. Might even there's there's talk about having a miniature class, a Cosm Clash type miniature game, tactical miniature game going on for for those who are interested in that. But Either if you, if you don't like it at all or you like it, the minis are really, really cool. I actually bought a 3D printer specifically for uh, printing the Tor Eternity mini, minis and have been happy with the, the detail and how awesome they look and having things that I've created been brought, kind of brought to light, not just in book form, which has got me very excited, but in miniature form is really exciting to, to, to see as well. So... Having said that, thank you very much for listening, for watching, and until next time, I really hope you have fun in your own Cosmverse. Bye.